welcome to a special interview at curetinnitis.org. My name is Dinus Mickle and I am your host. And as our guest today, we have a very, very special treat. We have Jennifer Bataglino. Bataglino, I gotta say, more, more, uh, well back. yeah, more, more American. I've been living in Europe for, for a while here. She's a licensed clinical social worker. She's a certified hypnotist, recently needed to be renamed a certified hypnotist from hypnotherapist because of some New York law issues, a certified tinnitus specialist. She's an accredited member of the National Association of Social Workers, the Association for Professional Hypnosis and Psychotherapy. Um, she's also a member of the New York State Society for Clinical Social Work and the National Guild of Hypnotists. Mm -hmm. She specializes in tinnitus, which is ringing of the ears, which has brought us all together watching this video, in chronic illness, depression, anxiety, fears, and phobias. Jennifer, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dinah. I'm happy to be here and happy to speak with you today. The way to quench its thirst is to say to yourself, if it was sending me a message, what would, what would that message be? And how do I handle the answer to that message without using tinnitus as the catalyst for handling that situation? Tinnitus tends to isolate. You know, oh, what if I go to that movie theater? What if I go to that restaurant? Well, if you're in your logical brain, you're detaching. And the whole goal of a lot of these exercises is to detach emotionally from the tinnitus. Okay. It now moves it, and you're conditioning. And what I like psychologically about all of it, you're doing it and you're choosing to do it. I can tell you, go try it, but you're going to choose to do it. So now you are in control, and the more in control you feel, the better you're going to get. Because tinnitus, to me, is the ultimate lack of control. You are being invaded in your body from the inside out, and, and that lack of control can drive a person crazy. So you are now taking your control back, and in these moments, you are purposely conditioning yourself to, be, to do something else. I'm driving on the parkway. And it's very bad connection. I get a voicemail because the connection didn't go through. So the voicemail is, this and so-and-so from the local pharmacy, my friend just called me. Her husband says he's going to commit suicide if she leaves, and he has tinnitus. Can you estimate how many patients you help with tinnitus? And um, yeah. can you, yeah, and actually, the, can you tell us of your success with them? There's an, okay. actual, an actual question about success rate, reaching silence for patients, and success stories. Okay. Um I tried to figure this out. So I'm going to estimate at about 2,000, a little over. Okay. It, it's been six years. You know, I, I've been telling people the same answer of, of hundreds. And then last night I tried to actually do the math, and it's got to be in the thousands now. Um, so that answers that question. Next one is success rate. It depends on how you look at success. So about a third of the people I work with go silent. If your goal is to habituate, don't mask. Masking only perfect. Masking is what it is. It masks your tinnitus. Right. If you ever gone to a loud restaurant and walk out, 90% of people will say, ooh, it was loud. Well, yeah, you didn't hear for an hour. And this is when I talk about tinnitus like it's alive. It goes, oh, didn't hear me for an hour. Here I am. I'm back loud and clear because the first thing you do is go check. So masking may give you some relief, but it doesn't promote habituation, in my opinion. And she had a lot of resentment about being the stay-at-home mom when she had just as big a career as him. But that's, you know, so there's all this stuff going on. So it was interesting because when we got to, she's, I always say my miracle, because within six or seven weeks her tennis was gone. That typically does not happen. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. the exception. We get to the seventh or eighth session, we do the parts therapy, and she sits up. And it's true, you get, it's a really wild thing to see somebody negotiate with themselves. It's not multiple personality, you're really just letting those, that debate happen so you can, for the very first time, have both parts working in, in harmony together. They're both moving in the same direction with the same plan. And that's all it is. You know, and I get very specific. Okay, you're saying you reach your kids now. How many times a week are you going to do that? At least two times a week. Okay, what's going to happen if you go fall back into that old habit? My tennis is going to come blaring back. Well, that's a punishment you know, structure. Sometimes, well, I don't tell them that. This woman said, I'm going to get blasted if I don't remember and appreciate. She was tough on herself. I know. I teach practical reduction exercises that are very cognitively based. 
um, that have nothing to do with hypnosis, nothing to do with a secondary gain or an emotion. It really is about conditioning the mind to focus elsewhere. So I do that too. Um, okay. Um, that's, you're calling that a practical reduction exercise? Let's say a tinnitus reduction exercise. Okay. Probably, no, it's just like something you can do five minutes a day that could help train your, retrain your brain. So now that's called, when I address that part, that's called ego state or parts therapy. So we got CBT, the hypnotherapy. In the middle of that, we've got psychotherapy. I always use your tinnitus is in remission. I always tell people, you like hard rock, listen to it. If you like jazz, listen to it. But do something you enjoy because you'll be more likely to focus on that than your tinnitus. It's moved from a threat to a non-threat. And then I believe that once it moves to a non-threat and you just and, and you can focus elsewhere with your life, that it the volume tends to go down. And spade is what I what I like to refer to as the as the perfect storm. So. SPADE stands for stress, panic, anxiety, depression, or emotional illness or emotional uh, charge. So the theory is that one, some, or all of those things are in a person's history who has tinnitus. Can you repeat them again? Okay, so SPADE, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it on my fingers so I don't miss one. Um, Stress, panic, anxiety, depression, emotional illness. So it doesn't have to be all five. It's one, some, or all of those things are in somebody's past. And there's that overload. There's the perfect storm. And so when you address that, tinnitus or no tinnitus, you're just a more peaceful person. Instead of using illness, sometimes I'll almost say it like your emotional charge, that emotional charge that comes with it. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. I always say the secondary gain. Does tinnitus stop you from doing something? Does it make you do something? I have a lot of people say, for the first time in my life, um, I'm sticking up for myself. I'm saying no because I'm the caregiver. I do for everybody. I never say no. It's running me into the ground. Look at you smiling like that, you know. And no, sorry, that's 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 yeah. that's been my big one. Right. Most people with tinnitus again are the caretakers. Uh, and again, I speak in metaphor a lot, and I am the queen of sayings and everything else, but. Uh, people with tinnitus tend to be the sponges of the world. They absorb everybody else's emotions, everybody else's heartache, everybody else's troubles. You know what I mean? They're, they're the caregivers. They're, it's almost a blessing and a curse because they do feel whatever's going on around them. And it's almost like learning to make sense of that and learning to manage it so you can still have all those good qualities, but they don't run you down. And then human nature kicks in. And it's like, well, you look fine. Stop complaining. You know, and, there's no cast on your arm that, to let people know that something's wrong. Mm-hmm. So that's what gets me going is just believe this poor person that's getting tortured and let's figure out a way to help them. So the idea is to give yourself conditioning exercises that help to, on demand, have your brain choose the task of something else other than focusing on tinnitus. People with tinnitus the personality traits, and this is generalizing, which you never generalize because there's an exception to every rule. Blanket statements don't work, but they tend to be successful in their own right. They tend to care about, you know, whether it's the stay-at-home mom who keeps the house the right way or the successful businessman or the woman who has her own business or whatever it is, they're smart. I, I find them to be very intelligent. I think people in general, like I said, they want predictability. They want a concrete answer. But you don't need that in order to get well. So there's basic, I'm going to make it very simple. There's basically two types of hypnosis. Okay. You have regression or suggestion. Um, what, the most amazing thing to me is at some point, almost, and I'm, I, again, there's an exception to every rule. But I'm going to say everybody I've worked with, I guess that's why I go, I had one man say to me, he goes, I wish I got this younger. You know, I would have appreciated my family more. I would have appreciated my parents more. You know, and, and he goes, I can't believe I'm saying this. You know. Who, you wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy to have tinnitus. So this has been a special interview uh, for CureTinnitus.org with Jennifer Badaglino. Uh, thank you so very much. Um, from me, I'm Dinah Smickle, and thank you on behalf of the CureTinnitus.org community. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to do this and speak with you. Likewise.